Does learning take place differently in online and blended learning environments? As educators, one of the things that most concerns us is the learning process. We want to do the best for our students and ensure they assimilate the subject. We want to make sure we are using the right learning theories and that we keep current with the latest ideas in this digital age. So instead of simply looking at differences between online and blended and face-to-face -face environments and trying to figure out which one would be better for teaching one subject or another, let's first look at learning with a focus on the most important piece of the learning puzzle. No, no. Nope. The learner. The first question to ask ourselves is, who is our learner? Is he on elementary school? On secondary school? Is he a more mature learner? Is he a kinesthetic learner? Tactile? Visual? Does he learn better reading by himself, watching a video, or listening to an audio tape? Is this a student who needs someone looking over their shoulders, or is this a self-motivated learner? It is very likely that you have a combination of these students in your classroom, virtual or otherwise. The next question to ask ourselves is, what is the student learning? Is this a chapter that requires memorization? Is the student required to do a lab or maybe perfect a manual skill? Is this a class where technology is an absolute requirement for project completion? Or can the student demonstrate his learning through more traditional means? And perhaps most importantly, is the student gathering 21st century skills and tools that will stick with him long after school is over? We should also consider the student's psyche when determining what delivery method would be the most successful. So, why has the student selected online or blended learning versus a brick and mortar solution? Many students require a certain flexibility to their learning. Some students suffer from anxiety regarding presentations, group work, and even going to school for a variety of reasons. Some have illnesses that stop them from getting out of their homes. Some students require individual learning plans with specific adaptations for their success. And sometimes a student and a teacher will not be compatible due to a variety of reasons. In these cases, flexibility of an online course can be very beneficial. For other students, a face-to-face -face component is required. These are students who perhaps thrive in social opportunities or who require a more immediate academic support and feedback. A student who is not self-motivated may find a purely online module insufficient to encourage learning and may require a face-to-face -face approach. A blended learning course offers via anytime, anywhere approach of an online course, but with the checkpoints and face-to-face -face meetings with the teacher. And this can be very useful for students who need the flexibility of learning at their own time while still having the human connection of a face-to-face -face checkpoint. This brings us to where this particular student will be the most successful in their learning. While brick and mortar is limited to a geographic location in a predetermined time, the time for online learning is defined by the learner on the learner's terms. Students who are traveling or living abroad may need a way to remain connected to their classroom. Students who are working already or who practice sports or otherwise need to work on odd hours on their coursework, respond better to the more unstructured option offered by online learning. Let's look at some of these differences in regards to delivery methods. As far as course design, well, it's a tie. Doing it right means that the material is delivered with the learner and the learning in focus, and that adequate support is provided as well as accounting for differentiation. A constructivist and connectivist approach is particularly important when working with students online. The relationship between teachers and students, well, on a face-to-face, -face, teachers can be pretty traditional and still learning can occur. But in an online only environment, for actual learning to occur, the teacher has to become more of a guide and allow students to make decisions. Simply putting a traditional coursework online expecting learning to occur is usually not very successful. While in a face-to-face -face setting, confident students tend to dominate the classroom. Students who are shy or anxious, they have an easier time asking the teacher online. Hands-on learning. Well, labs online, they have to be pretty creative, huh? And are mostly demonstrations in virtual labs. The inquiry process can be more challenging to set up successfully online. The delivery should be done in chunks with clear goals and expectations. 
The results, however, can be quite amazing, with deep learning that will last a lifetime. While teaching face-to-face -face can sometimes feel like swatting a barrel of monkeys, online needs minimal classroom management skills. Oral presentations are also much easier for students who attend online courses. The flexibility in methods of delivery can make students suffering from anxiety or stage fright feel finally at ease. With the increasing improvements of online communication, this has become easier every year. And now students can collaborate with other students from across the globe to produce creative displays of their learning. And sharing these online to their peers is a great motivator. Nowadays, young people are so used to collaborating and sharing online, it's so easy for us to tap into this naturally. So the student role in an online setting is very different from the student role in traditional classrooms. To answer the original question, does learning happen differently in an online and blended environment? The answer is, it depends on a variety of factors. The student, the teacher, and the method by which the material is presented. Technology can be a very attractive and very powerful tool, but it must be used creatively in order to be successful under a student-centered umbrella. In an ideal world, great and long-lasting learning can happen in a classroom just as often as through an online course. To quote Stephen Downs, we need to move beyond the idea that an education is something provided for us and toward the idea that an education is something that we create for ourselves. If we create our own education, then we must consider that we are merely guides towards our students' road to discovery. The key is finding ways to engage each and every different style of learner with the material, no matter if you meet them every day, every week, or if you never meet at all. Regardless of the location of your classroom, there is simply no denying the amazing opportunities for deep learning, collaboration and growth that technology brings. The interest and comfort with technology has been growing every year, and learning different tools to reach our students can only strengthen their learning process. Using Powtoon.